Tape has just released Arc 8 Chapter 45, and this video will be a summary of the chapter. Highly recommend you check out my Arc 8 Chapter 44 summary. Anyways, let's begin. The time returns to the battle between the tiger and the dragon. Garfield, who entered from the first apex, was battling the cloud dragon Mesioria. The die has been cast to get the desired payout. The reason why he was tasked with Mesioria is due to the mobility and offensive performance. Dragons who can fly high above and launch offensive blasts from the sky would be an issue as a dragon can wipe you out before you even knew it. Not only that, it would be very hard for you to retaliate. However, once you have Mesioria down, there are of course other enemies that can be dangerous if not handled correctly. They can deal significant damage in one move. And so, Garfield has to fight Mesioria. Arg! The twin blades lunged at the enemy, but it is blocked by the tip of a spear. The twin blades go for the neck of the undead, however Jamal is told to not kill them. The trajectory of Jamal's blades goes from the neck and cuts the arm of the undead off. Vincent calls out the name of the undead. Gaolan packs it. By the way, do keep in mind some of these names are going to be a bit iffy. The undead, hearing his name, freezes. And in that moment, three small shadows appear in front of the undead. And a voice repeats the undead's name, and speaker hearing this goes to eat the name of this person. The undead individual crumbles to dust after being severed from the world. However, before he turns to dust, the old man bowed before Vincent Valakia. Vincent reads off more names. Each time an undead appears, Vincent states their name, and speaker eats their name. Beatrice with Subaru then goes on to chant El Minya at the undead, cutting off their arms and legs. Beatrice's magic was of course super effective at destroying the undead, but this was not the purpose of her attack. Subaru was in the middle of Beatrice and Speaker, holding their hands, one with each hand. He moves into action. Vincent calls out their names. Speaker with Subaru and Beatrice in tow darts forwards and eats their names. The final undead caused Subaru to momentarily freeze, someone from the Gladiator Island. The undead swung his sword at Subaru's head, but the attack was frozen in place by Beatrice's magic. And then Speaker ate their name, and they crumbled to dust. Beatrice chastises Subaru for his behaviour, and Speaker dotes on Subaru. Subaru said he nearly died, and Vincent said if he had died, it would have been an honourable death at the start of the war. Subaru says at this point, he never felt more like an emperor than he does now. Vincent says he won't comment on that for the sake of the two girls he's holding on to at this point. And he'll just let Subaru ramble like a child. Subaru says this is the reason why Vincent isn't really liked as a royal. He's letting children do the fighting whilst he just stands there and watch. Jamal throws a tantrum saying that it's going to take a lot of time. Because no matter how many times you knock down the undead, they keep getting back up. Beatrice tells Jamal to lead the undead to Speaker so she can eat their names. But Jamal is confused, he has no idea what Beatrice is talking about. Vincent tells Jamal to follow Subaru and the others. Jamal agrees. Speaker gets asked if eating names is having any negative effect on her, and she doesn't seem to give a negative response, so that clears that idea. Vincent explains that the main force of the undead are at the Citadel, which is of course the city of Garkla, which means that their goal is to slip into the Imperial Palace and take out the ringleader. However, whilst the undead attacking the Citadel in the city of Garkla are in quantity, the undead in the Imperial City are instead quality focused. Starting with Mesioria, who covers the sky, the others defending the city are transcendental enemies, hence why a two-tiered invasion strategy was used. Subaru and the rest were near the fifth apex. The teams were Abel, Subaru, Beatrice, Jamal, Speaker in one team, 
and Garfield was on his own and the others were split up. This was the best way to split up the team. Any other combination would result in a loss. So by the way, um, I didn't mention it last chapter, but when Roswell looks at Subaru and says, is this the best you can do? And Subaru says yes, is actually heavily implied, and by the way, this pretty much confirms it, that Subaru has been dying multiple times to get the correct combination of who should be fighting who to win. However, the real arrow of attack is Subaru and the group. If anyone else fights Spinks, they would lose. Spinks created destruction in two countries, Lagunica and Valakia. If she, were, if she was let go and she slipped through the fingers, who knows what destruction she could cause now. Jamal says he'll then run to the Imperial capital. However, Subaru says it won't be easy. Subaru says it's impossible to go to the castle. Jamal says he isn't a coward. And then Abel asks why they can't simply go to the Imperial Palace. Subaru says that there is a curse that incapacitates you if you approach the palace. Subaru holds his chest and he imagines the unbearable pain. No one can function under that pain. Jamal questions Subaru. Jamal is not like Emilio or Beatrice. He wouldn't believe Subaru's claim. However, Vincent looks at Subaru and tells Jamal that there won't be a third time and to follow Subaru's orders. Emperor Vincent Valakia doesn't trust Subaru like Emilia or Beatrice does, but instead follows his wisdom. Jamal smashes his head with his own twin swords until blood is drawn, and he says he will learn from his mistake and will not let the Emperor down or let the Emperor repeat himself. Beatrice chastises Jamal for injuring himself and heals him. And then Vincent asks Subaru what the plan is. Subaru knew that speaker was the key to the plan, and as he began to speak, an explosion rattled out. Jamal defends Vincent, and from the smoke an enemy appears. Golden eye, deformed body. It may have originally been human, but the number of limbs were far removed from its original state. The right arm, branched into nodes, swung around like the beast of Fidel. The left arm propelled it forwards and the four legs dragged along behind it. This was the entity thought to have been killed in the dust explosion. However, Subaru and Beatrice decided to keep that secret. Of course, this enemy is Ishmael, by the way. At the same time, the scene changed. The Imperial City became a battlefield. The goal of victory and defeat comes down to the five apexes. The board has changed hands, but the conditions for victory are still the same. The boy forgets his pain. He stands tall to challenge the myth. Let the watchers in the heavens see which way the world will choose, Cecilus says. Cecilus slashes at the second son, Arachia, with a sense of resignation. Ah, I can finally see you again, the dear horned girl Tanza says to Yorna. Brother Balaroy, you have to talk to me, Medium says to the flying Balaroy. What a bad character you are. Halabel says to you guard Valakia, and with that the chapter ends. So it seems we're coming to the final sort of, I guess, fights. We've got everyone lined up, the five apexes are going at it, and uh, yeah, so Subaru has died numerous times to get the optimal setup. So I'm assuming that's the reason why um, uh, Subaru said there's someone worse than Mesioria, referring to you guard Valakia. And so Halibel has to be the person that takes this uh, absolute animal down. Um, thank you for watching.